following the golden rule with Andrew Foss is proudly supported by Remax St. Andrews. Live in vacation by the sea, choose wisely, choose Remax. Hello, my name is Andrew Foss, and welcome to Following the Golden Rule. And I'm Jay Reamer, and for 26 weeks, Andy and I will be discussing the ABCs of building character. We've accomplished more than half of the alphabet so far and gotten quite a lot of good feedback. Uh, this week, the word that we're going to use is purposeful. So, why, how did you pick the word purposeful and what does it mean to you? Okay, well the reason I picked purposeful is um, in work that uh, I've done with Yale University in uh, a study called Emotion Revolution in the Workplace. Uh, we found that, uh, that uh, the majority of, of, the, of American workers, Canada and U.S., uh, listed a number of things that were uh, uh, that they value, and uh, the number one is trust. Uh, number two is a sense of stability and security, and the third one was a, a sense of purpose. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, for me, uh, it is a an important characteristic uh, because I think I've I've always worked uh, towards and wanted to have a sense of purpose other than uh, other than uh, making a buck if you will mm -hmm. and and um, and I know in talking to people um, uh, being needed um, and uh, doing something other than uh, just making a living uh, is a very important motivator for people. Mm -hmm. I wonder whether or not, um, uh, you know, it, I, it's just occurring to me, uh, given the number of people uh, that are not engaged in uh, their work, really, uh, is, is that due to a lack of um, leadership pushing toward being purposeful? Uh, yeah, I guess indirectly it is, um, and um, I found in uh, the work I've done with organizations, uh, those organizations that uh, where employees had a common sense of purpose mm -hmm. um, uh, were uh, organizations that performed much better mm -hmm. and scored higher on, uh, on uh, employee engagement mm -hmm. uh, 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 surveys. So uh, yes, it it uh, it definitely is a uh, is a, a factor that uh, organizations should work towards. Um, I'll tell you a story. Um, and um, in 1962, uh, President Kennedy visited Cape Canaveral, as it was as, as it was then known, and uh, he went around and asked people. What do you do? And uh, obviously, with the number of rocket scientists and engineers that they had on board, uh, they all gave him very technical answers. And then he ran into a guy and uh, asked him, what, what do you do? And, and he answered, well, Mr. President, I'm here to help send the man to the moon and bring him back safely. Mm. And um, I say to executives uh, who are paying me to give me their advice, if every one of your employees could give that kind of an answer, mm -hmm. you, you don't have to pay me the big bucks that I'm uh, charging you. That's right. Mm -hmm. that, I, and I love that story. Mm -hmm. So without clearly stated objectives, what challenges do employers face with their employees? Not sure I understand the question. Um, so, if if an employer doesn't give the employee very clear direction on what they expect from them, and what is their purpose here, what are the challenges that that result in that? From well, that? The, well, well, the biggest 
challenge is uh, is disengagement, mm. and um, and uh, employees uh, who are not engaged uh, don't feel included in uh, in the exercise. So, um, as I mentioned earlier, the the organizations that you know have that strong st a collective sense of purpose. Mm -hmm. Why am I here? Right. And why am I doing this? And and why am I doing it this way? Um, if people don't understand that, mm -hmm. uh, then uh, then they are uh, likely not going to be contributing to their full potential. Uh -huh. And if you have that in mass, the organization does not work to its full potential. Yeah. And don't you see that happening a lot um, in organizations, whether it's um, companies or uh, government? Uh, I just see a lack of engagement as being a huge obstacle and an impediment to being innovative, um, coming up with good solutions, um, and striving toward what you have always um, you know, counseled people toward establishing psychologically healthy workspaces. Yes, and and um, collectively, um, uh, we as capitalists have failed miserably on that front. Mm -hmm. And and when we look at uh, the uh, in Canada our performance on a gross national product basis, uh, we're a laggard, mm -hmm. and we're a laggard because we have not fully engaged uh, and included. Uh, talent that uh, that want to contribute. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll cite another study, the, um, uh, and this is one that uh, we did with uh, Mental Health America. Uh, Forty thousand, uh, or close now close to fifty thousand uh, participants, and they uh, came back and uh, indicated that the vast majority came back and indicated that uh, that. Uh, they are engaged in overly bureaucratic, uh, non-value-added uh, activities, mm -hmm. and um, and uh, getting back to the Yale survey, uh, the number uh, f uh, four item after purpose was they also want a sense of efficacy. Mm -hmm. Uh, so they do want to contribute. They do want to work to their full potential. Yeah. They do want to be creative. They do want to provide some of the answers uh, when uh, in an environment where, uh, by and large, they were considered an expendable com mm -hmm. commodity, yeah. a disposable. And, uh, uh, and uh, we're going through... Uh, the same thing that occurred after the last recession. Mm -hmm. um, I'll cite a company uh, that I've used as an example, Chevron, who um, prided themselves on the um, uh, social obligation that they had uh, with their stakeholders, mm -hmm. and, and an employee is a stakeholder. Mm -hmm. uh, in May, uh, when their uh, um, uh, performance uh, took a, a, a hit uh, because of oil prices declining, uh, indicated that they would they were going to lay off uh, 15 to 20 percent of mm -hmm. their employees. Yeah, employees they gave a promise to, they brought in on the basis that they would have. Uh, they wanted lifers, mm -hmm. something that uh, employers have gotten away with. So they were, in essence, told um, that um, uh, you're no longer um, needed. Mm -hmm. And the and when that occurs uh, with somebody, um, uh, it's basically saying to an employee, "You're not needed." Yeah. And therefore, uh, so many. Uh, have in that last recession, and we're starting to see it now, mm -hmm. are losing their sense of purpose. Mm -hmm. And Thomas Hobbes indicated that uh, no, in essence, no person can live with the terrible knowledge they are not needed. Yeah. 
It's one of the it's one of the um, <clears throat> it's one of the uh, great fears of retirement for a lot of people, but they don't know about it until they've retired, because suddenly, as we get older, and we ch and our lifestyles change, we begin to feel less useful, and mm -hmm. it's depressing, and demoralizing, and it is and it causes not only uh, a decline in in mental health, but it it affects our physical health as well. So having a purpose is something that we need to have through our uh, lives. Absolutely. Now I had the privilege of, of uh, retiring in my uh, mid-fifties uh, from, uh, uh, from corporate life. Mm -hmm. And, um, and uh, I attribute uh, the fact that I'm uh, alive and uh, and uh, much to the chagrin of many uh, still um, <laughs> uh, out there and uh, espousing stuff that I'm espousing and mm -hmm. um, and being this uh, oracle, if you will. Um, and um, my sense of purpose uh, has shifted uh, to um, to reducing the level of stress that people face in their in their lives mm -hmm. personally and professionally and uh, we're in the midst of a loneliness epidemic mm -hmm. and uh, and uh, I would uh, assert that the reason for their loneliness is they don't feel needed mm -hmm. uh, and there's nobody there to uh, to uh, to support them, yeah, and the and the support uh, that everybody can give people is giving them back a reason for being, mm -hmm. and whether that's as a parent, uh, whether that's as a friend, or whether that's as an employer, uh, whether that's as a uh, just an observer. Mm -hmm. Um, I, uh, I encourage people who um, are um, uh, displaced um, and have lost that sense of purpose that they had when they had a job mm -hmm. to reinvent themselves mm -hmm. regardless of age. And, um, and it's going to be, for many, a matter of necessity to put food on the table. Mm -hmm. But for others, it's to continue to have a reason to be there. That's right. And, and, uh, and that is such a powerful um, uh, motivator for people to think through and, uh, and seize the opportunity mm -hmm. to say that there's some stuff I really enjoy doing, mm -hmm. um, and and uh, or a hobby that they have, mm -hmm. uh, or an interest that they have. We'll look at that and say, how can I make that be my reason for being? Right. It's interesting mm -hmm. uh, the um, the effects that the pandemic has had on people because so many people have lost their jobs and uh, a number of people have discovered that they have talents that they didn't realize before and they're now thinking along as you're suggesting how to monetize those those talents and um, if we uh, if we believe that uh, a entrepreneurial uh, culture is going to um, emerge from this uh, successfully it's a great opportunity for people to think outside of the box and say to themselves in the mirror, what do I really want to do? Because as you mentioned, it's, you're never too old to reinvent yourself. That's right. Yeah. And, and it goes beyond the monetary, uh, mm -hmm. and much beyond the monetary. And, and, uh, and if people approach it on the basis of, of uh, really being engaged mm -hmm. uh, to do something, Having a fulfilling um, and life. Having a fulfilling life. Um, and most are coming from a life where, yes, they got the monetary benefits. Um, but for, for many, uh, they just worked and process became a substitute for purpose. Right. And, and there's so much um, uh, uh, 
uh, slack in our systems because of, of being tied to a legacy, a legacy approach. And this is, a, this is the way we've always done it, uh, to people not wanting to let go of their power and control. You look at all of those dynamics and people basically, uh, and I would suggest the majority of people, are basically going through the emotions or the, the, the emotions to have that paycheck mm -hmm. to feed their family or in, in many instances even get rich over on it. Mm -hmm. But they were not working towards that sense of being, that sense of purpose. Mm -hmm. So switching gears a little bit, uh, but staying with the theme that we've uh, covered throughout this series, how does um, purpose affect emotional intelligence? If, if purpose becomes your your guiding light uh, or your your northern light, uh, you become focused on doing what is what you have to do to achieve that. Mm -hmm. And it's thinking through that versus being in a re all in a constant reactionary mode. Mm -hmm. Emotional intelligence is getting people to to make an in, in, an emotionally intelligent decision mm -hmm. or just an intelligent decision mm -hmm. versus an emotional one. Right. And um, and again, the the whole premise of uh, decision-making and choices that people make um, have to be thought through mm -hmm. and and particularly now when there is a lot of emotion yeah and uh, and polarization and um, and and reactiveness mm -hmm. so um, uh, 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 having that as a northern uh, star yes um, and then thinking through how you're gonna, going to reach that. Mm -hmm. and, and for many people to just survive mm -hmm. uh, requires a lot of self-reflection mm -hmm. and requires a lot of thought relative to how you're going to do that mm -hmm. and, and, and be true to uh, to your moral and and ethical um. yeah it's a it's a real challenge in this culture of fear that has just uh, been exacerbated by the pandemic and the politics that have resulted. If your goal in consulting with organizations is to help them create psychologically safe workplaces, how can being purposeful help? Well, it's getting alignment uh, relative to uh, to what that collective uh, purpose is, mm -hmm. um, and uh, it's like uh, the story of the janitor mm -hmm. um, uh, sending a man to the moon and bring him safely back. Mm -hmm. Like many things, it should not be the sole endeavor of an uh, of an organization. Mm -hmm to get people motivated, engaged, and included. Mm -hmm. um, and if we look at that list of, of, uh, of what, what employees value, mm -hmm. it's that level of trust. Mm -hmm. It's that sense of stability and security. It's that sense of purpose. It's that sense of efficacy. And it's that sense, uh, it's, it's the ability to speak truth to power. Mm -hmm. So organizations that get those conditions right in an organization will uh, will uh, uh, better be able to survive what they're going to through mm -hmm. and thrive, grow, and prosper. It seems like um, purpose, pur uh, the feeling of being purposeful and needed, and so forth, is could be a byproduct of good leadership. And that's what the the goal, I suppose, is. I would see it a little bit differently. Uh, you know, I would see it as a as a product, not a byproduct. Mm -hmm. And this is something that just becomes so ingrained. So mm -hmm. when um, when I know in uh, in when I've 
um, in, uh, in a position to select people into leadership positions, I go through uh, a number of characteristics that I would expect people to uh, to go through. Mm -hmm. But one of the first kind of questions I do ask them is, like, why do you want this job? Mm -hmm. And um, and and what I really want to get at is, what is their personal sense of purpose? Mm -hmm. And um, and uh, and some you have to draw that out, uh, and others have a very clear picture of that. Mm. And I, I found that people who have a clear picture on what their sense of purpose is beyond just filling a seat mm -hmm. um, is um, is um, uh, have have made for uh, better leaders. Mm -hmm. So, um, as we've done in the past with uh, other words, we've found that they are interrelated. And um, so, some of the characteristics that we've discussed, for example, mindfulness, uh, is very closely related to uh, purposeful. And I'm just wondering if uh, you, in your self-reflection uh, time, have found other uh, relationships with the words that you'd like to share? Well, <clears throat> I would say that the, the one that's most relatable um, is, uh, is courage. Mm -hmm. And, and um, in, or in the, the dynamics of any group that you're involved with, mm -hmm. and personally and professionally, um, you're going to have uh, disagreements relative to um, to um, um, a lot of things. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you do not have alignment on a sense of purpose, mm -hmm. uh, so why why are we doing this? Mm -hmm. And then why are we doing it this way? Um, um, when you start connecting all of those characteristics and more. Mm -hmm. uh, but courage comes in when somebody in, who is not in a position of power in a command and control environment mm -hmm. puts up his hand and says, wait a minute, right. why are we doing this again? And why are we doing it this way? Mm -hmm. Speaking truth to power and staying true to that North Star. Mm -hmm. I think that, that you know, that's, that's something that's a great takeaway. So we have a couple of minutes left, uh, Andy, and I'm just wondering if there are any other little points about purposefulness that, uh, that you'd like to share with us. Well, um, same as with other characteristics, um, I'm spouting off my um, uh, interpretation and definition and um, and what I uh, how I feel about it. Uh, but I think it's incumbent on everybody to uh, reflect on it, do self, uh, do a self reflection on um, why are we, why are you here? Mm -hmm. Why are you doing what you're doing? Yeah. Why are you doing it this way? Mm -hmm. And uh, and everybody, um, I think, is able to find that northern star. Mm -hmm. um, many are f being forced into finding that northern mm -hmm. star. And uh, go for it. Yeah. I know that um, I remember a few years ago, uh, some ladies um, came to the hotel and they were all celebrating their 50th birthday. And, they, and it was a terrible weather, the yeah. blizzard. And they called up and they said, we want you to come up to the room and talk to us about finding our passion at 50. And I thought, good heavens. It was quite an interesting uh, conversation, but it, a lot of it had yeah. to do with what are we doing here and why are we doing it? And so it ties in very much with a subject that a lot of people, um, uh, you know, think about a lot. So I think yeah. the self-reflective, um, piece is important and I've found that the self-reflection that I have done through this has been very revealing to me. 
So thank you, Andy, for sharing your thoughts on Purposeful. And thank you for joining us today. And we look forward to seeing you again next week when we will be discussing Quirky. Following the Golden Rule with Andrew Foss is proudly supported by Remax St. Andrews. Live in vacation by the sea, choose wisely, choose Remax.